Glendalough, meaning Valley of Two Lakes, is a glacial valley in County Wicklow, Ireland. This is Eastern Ireland for those of you looking on the map. The valley is renowned for its early medieval monastic settlement, which was founded in the 6th century by Saint Kevin. I'm the wandering Englishman, and today you find me in Ireland. Let us explore Glendalough together. Accessible as a day trip from vibrant Dublin, or the way I think it's best done, you can visit the surrounding area as a weekend break or en route to wonderful Cork. Now if you're curious about Cork, do check out my video where I try to see as much of Cork in 24 hours as possible. However, before you do, join me while I take in and admire one of Ireland's many wonders, this being Glendalough. Upon arriving at Glendalough, you can access it via a visitor centre for a fee or approach from the roadside where you can access the site for free. The visitor's centre is a great spot for those looking to delve into the history of Glendalough, but sadly, education will cost you money, whereas a casual stroll through the park is free. Now stick with me in this video and I'll give you the historical background for free. This is the gateway to the monastic city of Glendalough. It is one of the most important monuments, now totally unique in Ireland. It was originally two-storied with a two fine granite arches. The projecting walls at each end suggest that it once had a timber roof. Inside the gateway, in the west wall, is a cross inscribed stone. This donated sanctuary, the boundary of the area of refuge. The paving of the causeway in this monastic city is still preserved in part, but very little remains of the enclosure wall. I think it's amazing to think how many monks have probably left their mark on the stone. You can see it's worn away, and we have footprints on the stone wall. Or footprints, the fact that this has been used so many times over this I presume centuries. Up next, we see the fine round tower. Built of mica slate interspersed with granite, it is about 30 meters high with an entrance three and a half meters from its base. The conical roof that you see was rebuilt in 1876 using the original stones. The tower originally had six timber floors connected by ladders. The four stories above the entrance level are each lit by a small window, while the top story has four windows facing the cardinal compass points. Round towers act as landmarks for approaching visitors, but were built as bell towers, but also served on occasion as storehouses and as places of refuge in times of attack. If you're curious what one is like to climb, do check out my video from Kilkenny, where I climb the round tower there. This beautiful tourist site is found just south of the Wicklow Mountains, the Wicklow Conservation Reserve. Wicklow Mountains National Park? Wicklow Mountains National Park. Tell me, how long have you been walking for? Glen de Loch means the valley of two lakes. And the lakes can be found in this direction, but what's significant about this monostatic settlement is this round tower. And this round tower is something special to the Irish people. It's something special to the heritage of Ireland. And it is quite impressive. This is the second time I've been here. Each time I'm blown away by just the sort of peacefulness of it. Despite the fact you can see there's tourists over here, it can get quite busy. There's a very busy tourist car park in that direction. Where are you from? Wicklow? Yeah. If you pick the right moment, you can feel just the peace that the monks would have felt and you can feel at one with nature. The reason this site is so celebrated is for St. Kevin. Now, St. Kevin was a descendant of one of the ruling families of Leinster. He studied as a boy under the care of three holy men, Ewan, Lochan, and Anan. During this time, he went to Glendalough. He was later to return with a small group of monks to found the monastery, where the two rivers form a confluence, the place we now stand. Kevin's writings discuss his fighting knights at the Glendalough. Scholars today believe this refers to the process of self-examination and his personal temptations. His fame as a holy man spread and he attracted numerous followers. He died in 618 on the 3rd of June. The 3rd of June is celebrated to this day with an annual feast. For the next six centuries, Glendalough flourished despite the numerous brutal Viking raids on this settlement. In around 1042, oak timber from Glendalough was used to build the second longest Viking longship recorded, around 30 meters. I just love how, despite the stones leaning, 
get those stones put right. It's just still very beautiful, and it's, there's still a path underneath those stones. There's a book called Glendalock, which was written here in around 1131. The famous St. Lawrence O'Toole was born in 1128. He later became the abbot of Glendalock. He was well known for his sanctity and his Celtic hospitality. Even after his appointment as the Archbishop of Dublin in 1162, he returned occasionally to Glendalock, to which he sought the solitude of St. Kevin's bed. Glendalock was plundered by foreigners in 1214. The dioceses of Glendalock and Dublin were united after this. From that time onwards, the cultural status of Glendalock diminished. The destruction of the settlement began embarrassingly by English forces in 1398. This left it in ruin, but it continued as a church of local importance and a place of pilgrimage forevermore. And as you can see here, this captures the valleys over here. As you can see me holding my lunch, the valley over here, and you'll find one of the locks heading in that direction. Imagine the Vikings sort of coming up here. Taking what they needed and burning to the ground the old wooden monasteries. Hence the reason eventually had stone monasteries to replace them. The present remains of Glendalock tell only a small part of its history. The monastery in its heyday included workshops, areas of manuscript writing and copying, guest houses as well as an infirmary, farm buildings and dwellings for both the monks and a large lay population. The buildings which survived probably date between the 10th and the 12th centuries. St. Peter in St. Paul's Cathedral is the largest and most imposing of the buildings at Glendalock. The cathedral had several phases of construction, the earliest consisting of the present nave with its ante and the large Mika Schist stones which can be seen up to the height of the square-headed west doorway were used from the earlier smaller church. The chancel and the sacristy date from the late 12th and early 13th centuries. The chancel arch and the east window was finally decorated though many of the stones are now missing. The north doorway to the nave also dates from that period. And also you can find a piscina which is a basin used for washing the sacred vessels of the time. A few meters south of the cathedral, an early cross of local granite with an unpierced ring is commonly known as St. Kevin's Cross. Amazing to think this used to be a room. You said yourself it used to be a church. Look. Here lieth the body of Luke Tool of Anna Mooch. He departed his life this day of August 1795. If you appreciate this content, do give this video a quick like. Also, it really helps this small channel grow by clicking that subscribe button. And if you really, really want to be generous, there's a join button which gives you member privileges. If you join the upper tier, I will attempt to send you a postcard from a destination every single month. Where that postcard is from, who knows, but only those members who are second tier get to see those postcards. Also a big thank you to my members on Patreon, Subscribestar, on the YouTube channel. Without you, you guys make making these videos much more pleasurable. It makes traveling that a little bit more easier to afford. I thank you for that. This is the priest's house, almost totally reconstructed from the original stones, based on a 1779 sketch made by Beranga. The priest's house is a small Romanesque building with a decorative arch at the east end. It gets its name from the practice of interring priests there in the 18th and 19th centuries. Its original purpose is unknown, although it may have been used to house relics of St. Kevin. Now this magnificent building is St. Kevin's church, this ancient stone roof building originally had a nave only with an entrance at the west end and a small rounded headed window at the east gable. The upper part of the window can be seen above what became the chancel arch when the chancel now missing and the sacristy were added later. The steep roof is formed by overlapping stones. It is supported internally by a semicircular vault. Access to the croft or roof chamber was through a rectangular opening towards the western end of the vault. The church also had a timber first floor. 
The belfry, with its conical cap and four small windows, rises from the west end of the stone roof in a form of a miniature round tower. It is commonly known as St Kevin's Kitchen, as the bell tower resembles a kitchen chimney. However, food was never cooked here. A distinct lack of windows, but it's a seriously magnificent building. Just to think how old this building is and just how magnificent it is. Many a service has gone on in here. Not really anymore. If you get a chance to go inside, it's very dark. I guarantee there's no lights in the old church. Sadly, I can't go in there today. The door is on the other side. They built them to last back then. The fact is the cement is still in place. This is, well, it's about a thousand years old. Truly remarkable. When you visit this area, you can obviously take these long walking trails along Glendalock and take in the various glens. I'm going to try and find a place to have my lunch. I've got the perfect herbs for that. They're from the Wicklow Mountains. Effectively, you like nature like this and peaceful surroundings. Yes, it's busy on a Sunday. If you come on a Sunday or a Saturday, you're going to see a lot of people. The beautiful valley of Glendalock was formed during the Ice Age by a glacier or glacier depending on how you might say it. Tomato, tomato, as they say. The glacier left a moraine across the valley mouth. The Pulanas River plunges into the valley from the south by the Pulanas waterfall, created a delta which eventually divided the original lake in two. Surrounding Glendalough are the mountains of Camdarli, which is 699 meters. The hydroelectric station, which can be found on Turlay Hill at 681 meters and the large massive of Convala, which is 734 meters, which dominates the head of the valley. And the peaks of Lungduf, which are 652 meters, and Mulakur, which is 661 meters. One of the beautiful things about walking through the valley is the fact that you're surrounded by semi-natural oak woodland. Much of this was formerly cut to the base, in part probably by the Vikings for their longboats, but also in part for the fact that people needed to survive and cook, similar to what happened to most woodland throughout the British Isles. Obviously, if you were to walk here, depending on the season, you will see different vegetation. For example, in the springtime, you would see the bluebells and the daffodils, and in the autumn, you would obviously see the leaves changing and falling. The wonderful thing about Ireland is, it doesn't matter when you are here, it will always look beautiful. For those of you that like bird watching, there's an array of birds to be found in these forests. From grey spotted woodpeckers, to wood warblers, to the peregrine falcons, to simply the common cuckoo. And my favourite, you'll see lots of crows. I'm a big fan of crows. And right here is the Glendalock Hotel. I'm not staying at here, but you can see how popular this place is with all the tourists. This big car park welcomes all those that want to take a bit of a trek through the, the valley of two lakes, the valley of the two locks, Glendalock, and take in the old monastatic places, take in the history, just take in nature. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful place. Anyway, if you like this content, I'm Alex and I'm the Wandering Englishman, and hopefully, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Click this video for more like this, and remember to click that subscribe button, and if you like it, click that like button as well. Until next time, keep progressing.